Hey, welcome back to Venom Central. We're going to jump ship today and do something a little milder. Usually we're handling all these wild snakes, but I'm going to show you how I safely handle my Gila monsters, a venomous lizard. Now there's two types of venomous lizards and we got the Gila monster and the beaded lizard, which, you know, we found out in the past several years that all your varanids are actually a venomous lizard too. And all the studies that have been done with Komodos and a lot of different varanids have a a venom apparatus and but it's all pretty interesting stuff but I'm going to show you my healers I just got done doing some spot cleaning and I want to explain how I spot clean cages and I spot clean my healers and my rattlesnakes and everything that I spot clean anything that I use mulch or a substrate in and uh but let's show you some some animals here real quick and I'm going to talk about this as I'm moving along here but uh now this is one of my healers and these are probably the only animals that I consider as a pet because these guys have a great personality. They are actually kind of quirky and funny, and I just adore them. They are a really neat little animal. And, of course, you know, I don't think that everybody should have a Gila monster because they are a venomous lizard. But if you have the experience and you have, you know, some common sense they can be kept safely um but i love them they're actually one of my favorite animals they're actually i consider them my pets <laughs> i don't consider these venomous snakes my pets that's a job these are pets and they crack me up and i enjoy taking care of them but let me show you this mayo i want to show you how i pick them up safely and how i move them around and of course i'm wearing a glove because they are a venomous animal I mean, why suffer a bite from a Gila? I see guys picking them up and, you know, just handling them like they're harmless. And to tell you the truth, they're not harmless. They can they can put a hurt on you. I mean, it, it's not going to kill you, but it's going to make you sick and wish you were probably dead. Um, I've never been bit by one, and I don't plan on it. That's why I do wear a glove. And mine are actually pretty tame, but you never know. They may just figure out one day that they don't feel like being handled and they're going to pop you one. And the thing is, when they bite you, they hang on like little freaking pit bulls and they start chewing. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to show you how I pick them up. Low stress situation for them. And it keeps them comfortable and it keeps me safe from getting bit. You want to come in a little bit? Okay, see, he's already huffing and puffing a little bit. And instead of reaching down and grabbing the seat down, that is behavior like, okay, I don't want to be fooled with. Instead of reaching down and grabbing them and grabbing them behind the head and picking them up and that, that stresses them out. They think something's trying to eat them. And I can understand that. I wouldn't like nobody grabbing me behind my neck. If somebody grabbed me behind my neck, I'd bite them too. So what I do is, with my good bite-proof glove on, I slide my hand underneath him like this. You see how he didn't do that that quick snappy thing? That didn't spook him. I kind of slide my hand up underneath him like this. And I'll work him into my hand. Alright. Like that. And give him a little platform. And then I'll grab his tail. And lift him up onto my hand. I'll show you again. Just let him crawl into my hand. Lift him up with the tail. And then support him. You know. It doesn't trip him out. See. Now he's not defensive. He's got some skin coming off. And this is the male he just shed. And he's just gorgeous. And this is actually a banded Gila. I only have the bandits. I don't have the reticulated. I like the bandits the best. And I keep an eye on these guys' toes when they start shedding. I make sure I get that skin off of them. Just so they don't end up with stuck shed on their toes and end up losing a toe. Sometimes you see Gila's missing toes and things. I like to keep mine pretty pristine. There we go. That's a good boy. But, look at that face. These guys are really quirky. I mean, that's a face only a mama can love, right? Nah, we love our heels. <laughs> and, of course, if I'm going to keep them, they got to be venomous. So, <laughs> but what a beautiful animal. What a fun animal. They are really, really fun to keep. 
and they're easy to keep. I'm going to talk a little bit about the way I keep them and, and, and what works for me. And we've actually just reproduced them. We're waiting on eggs to hatch. And I'll show you guys the eggs. But now, telling males from females is, is not that easy with healers. I mean, the only true way to do it, they say, is an ultrasound, which I'm not a healer expert, but what I've been told by the healer guys and what I can physically see with my own eyes is the males, when they reach adult like this, I mean, they get a big, thick head. They get a big, buffy head. It's kind of bigger and wider, and I'll show you the female's head, and she's kind of got more of a little, little bit of a pear-shaped head, a little more of a dainty head, but... And also, a lot of guys will keep big groups of them together and just watch behavior and see if who's chasing who around, who's combating, and tell males from females that way. But we're going to let this guy go back into his cage. There you go, buddy. There you go, dude. Now, I keep these guys set up. Of course, we've got a warm end and we've got a cool end. I just clean this cage, I spot clean, and I just reach in and pick up the poop and spray some hex on it. Oh, I want to talk about that too. But, real quick, warm end, I keep 85, 88 degrees, and cool end, it'll stay at about 80 degrees. Now, mind you, this cool end, I keep this hide moist inside. It's, I, I keep it with a good humidity in there, and they kind of enjoy that. They enjoy the humidity and enjoy a moist, cool area. I mean, they're in that hide probably 80% of the time. They usually come over and use the warm hide after they eat for a day or two. But substrate, anything works. I mean, I use a hardwood mulch mixed in with this um, orchid moss and a little bit of soil. That way they can dig around and make mounds and, and do things because they like to dig. And they like a lot of space. You'll see that they like to travel. They like to walk around. So I give them a good four foot cage and give them some room. I want them to have good enrichment. I want them to be happy and healthy so they reproduce. But that's our male. And I want to talk about this too. It just, this just popped into my head. Now when I'm spot cleaning anything, I mean using the bigger cages exhibits with mulch and soil and different things. Of course you're going to reach up and pick up the feces and get rid of it and then fluff it back up and make it look nice and get rid of the smell but I'll spray that area after I've removed the feces with hexadine okay and this is a diluted solution of course now hexadine is actually used as an antiseptic okay now it's used to treat wounds and abrasions and uh, cuts and things like that on horses on dogs and I mean I use it on the reptiles but it kills bacteria, so it's 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 great for spot cleaning. I use it as a cleaning agent. I mean, I'll remove the feces and I'll just give a little spray right there, and it'll kill any bacteria that may grow on the surrounding area. And I dilute it. Actually, a bottle like this, I just use a little capful of hexadine. I'll show you this too. I'll use a little capful, just a capful of this, right into my spray bottle. That's all it needs, and it'll last you a long time. Now, mind you, this is only an external use only, and I do use it to treat animals, and I order this through my vet, and the thing is, is it cannot be ingested. Do not let an animal ingest it. I, I, a good story, I had a friend of mine who keeps rattlesnakes, and one of his rattlesnakes had... <clears throat> and he had some scale rock going on, and um, and he knew about hexadine. He, he uses it to spot clean like I do, but I don't know why he did this because he, he had a brain fart or something. He actually diluted the solution and put it in a tub, and he soaked his rattlesnake in hexadine. <laughs> and then he, he calls me several days later. He goes, man, that snake died. I wonder what happened. I go, well, tell me what you did. And he explained what he was doing and how he's been treating it, and and I just went, you soaked that snake in hexadine? Why in the fuck would you do that? That snake drank that water with hexadine in it, and it killed him. If this stuff is ingested, it will kill a reptile. It's deadly if it's ingested. It's for external use only. So if you're going to use hexadine for anything, what you want to do, it's actually chlorohexadine. I call it hexadine for short. 
But what you want to do is put it in a spray bottle. If you get one of your lizards or one of your snakes end up with some scale rot or, or some kind of an abrasion or a cut, any kind of wound, you just give them a little, a little mist on it, and it's an antiseptic, and it's great stuff. You just read the damn directions on it, and but just make sure you don't let them ingest it. If they ingest it, it'll kill them. It will kill them. I've seen it firsthand. I watched my buddy kill one of his rattlesnakes, soaking it. <laughs> just, just stupid. Just didn't realize it. Didn't know. Didn't read the damn label. The label's the law. How to use it, and he killed one of his animals. So, but anyways, it's great for spot cleaning. And it keeps things a little cleaner. Instead of having to remove all the mulch and do that, I spot clean. And then I only replace my mulch maybe once a month. It cuts down on the workload. But anyways, to move on back to our topic. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get off topic. But I'm trying to share some knowledge on how I keep things and how I maintain things. Now, let me show you the female. Well, where's my lid for this tub? Here it is. Okay, we're going to move this around so we got a platform, and this is my little girl, and she is actually going into shed, she's just starting to shed, and you can see the skin starting to peel up off of her, and she's a little more chill than the other one, don't mind, you see, I'll slip my hand underneath her. I'm not going to reach over there and grab her behind her head and pick her up. I'll grab her tail. And if i got to set her down and redo her and then support her. And I'll go around and I'll pick some of this skin off of them, which they probably don't like it too much, but it bugs me seeing it all hanging on them like that. And it's coming off in nice big pieces. And that's because she's been hanging out on that moist side of the cage. So she's shedding out pretty nice. But she's a pretty girl when she's all shed out. And this is her first year producing. And I'll show you guys the eggs here in a minute. But notice the head on her now. Look how her head is more pear-shaped. And it's a lot smaller than that male's head. I should have kept him out so we can compare him side to side. And... Now, I'm taking a liberty here getting my hand a little close to her head, but I know she won't bite me, but, you know, it's when you know something that it happens differently. So, <laughs> I'm not going to keep doing that. But, isn't she adorable? And notice the venom glands under the jaw right here. This right here. That's the venom glands in the Gila. And they've got them little groove teeth that need to sink into you and chew on you and, and envenomate you. Which would probably be very painful. I don't think anybody's ever died from a heel bite. Not that I know of, but why go through that misery? Handle them the right way. <laughs> Put a damn glove on. Well, let's let her crawl back into her hide. Go on, little girl. The funny thing. Healers, when I first started keeping healers, <clears throat> I'd come in at night and check on, check temperatures, make sure her cages are running right, and I'd catch her sleeping in her hide. And one day, one night I came in and I caught her, and she was laying, and she was upside down, and with her, with her little, her little feet up in the air like this, and I tripped out. I thought she was dead. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck happened? I quick looked at the eye and she righted herself and just quick looked at me like, I'm fine, daddy. I'm just sleeping. But it spooked me. I was like, I, I thought something happened to her and she died. But they actually will roll on their backs and go to sleep. It's funny as all hell. And they'll lay on their sides and sleep. They'll curl up in the side of a hide and, and, and lay on their side and I mean, you damn near want to give them a little pillow. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're really cool. I love healers. And these are actually pets. But to move on, let me show you guys what we got going on this year with the... We actually got a clutch of healer eggs. And these eggs are just at... They were about... They were, I have to look at my notes. They're... They're, they're a little over three months now, and they've all stayed, and they look really great. Well, this one is starting to dent in a little bit on the side there, 
and I'll run them in vermiculite and I'll hatch them out in a cheap old hover baiter. That's what I've been using. That's what I've used for years. I use a, a big hover reptile hover baiter and I fill the bottom of it with water with my grade and then my tub with my vermiculite and eggs and sets in there and let them go. And I've been <clears throat> doing these at about 82 to 83 degrees, but they're all holding really well and they look good. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we get a good hatch, which I'm fairly confident they're going to hatch. But this egg starting to dent in a little bit, that's showing me that they're getting close. They're probably about a month out. That's the only thing is Gila eggs take four to five months to hatch. They're they're crazy waiting on them. It's just a long time. They're like some turtle eggs. They take forever to hatch. But when these hatch, we'll do a video showing baby Gila's because there's nothing cuter than a baby Gila. They're, they're cuter than freaking puppies. But uh, I'm going to get these back in the incubator. And if I can find my lid, there we go. <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe. Check in with Venom Central. Um, hit, give us a thumbs up. Hit the like button. And uh, check back with us. We're going to be doing a lot more videos. And uh, thank you everybody for the support. And stick with us because we're in for the long haul. Willie, Venom Central, checking out. Later.